Hey, what is going on? Hope everyone's doing well. Hopefully you remembered from Friday we start. No, actually, there were some technical problems on Friday. So Thursday, we introduced this article here. Hopefully you remember a little bit of that, the Armenian genocide. We spent a lot of time on just like the first paragraph in the picture. So what I would like to do is uh, go through this and talk about how some of this is going to mirror what happens in the Holocaust. I mean, somewhat, somewhat. But we're talking the Ottoman Empire, very powerful empire at the time. We're going to talk about Armenia, how they were a country at one time, and then they get absorbed into the Ottoman Empire. We're going to talk about how the two different religions were, are going to play a factor, how the Ottomans or, or the Turks are going to be Muslim and the Armenians are going to be Christian. Okay, just a little preview there. The Roots of Genocide, the Ottoman Empire. The Armenian people have made their home in the Caucasus region of Eurasia for some 3,000 years. For some of that time, Armenia was an independent kingdom. At the beginning of the 4th century AD, it became the first nation in the world to make Christianity its official religion. Hopefully you have heard that plenty of times when you think Armenia, you think Christianity. Uh, that's important. For the most part, however, control of the region shifted from one empire to another. During the 15th century, Armenia was absorbed into the mighty Ottoman Empire. Now, that is something probably for us Americans. That's like super foreign. That is something that we can't even really comprehend, that the land that we live on could change empires, could change countries, if you remember when we were watching some bald and bankrupt, I think every class watched it when bald or Ben is his name. When he was going into Ukraine, there was a part of Ukraine that actually had Hungarian street signs. I think it was when he was trying to leave Hungarian street signs. A lot of the people there spoke Hungarian because at one time that land was part of Hungary. The same with um, there's a city in uh, the northwestern part of Ukraine, which is called Lviv, well, for a long time, that was part of Poland. And so some lands, especially if they're in between two powerful nations, like Poland is in between Germany and Russia, you might see their land changing a couple times during their lifetime. Maybe they switch languages or something. Dogs waking up. Um, next part here, it'll be right at the top of um, the page there. The Ottoman rulers, like most of their subjects, were Muslim. They permitted religious minorities, like Armenians, to practice their religion, but they also subjected them to unequal and unjust treatment. So hopefully you know that word, subjected. They had to endure it. Christians had to pay higher taxes than Muslims, for example, and they had very few political and legal rights. In spite of these obstacles, the Armenian community thrived under Ottoman rule. Now, here is where the problem comes in, and this is how it's a lot like what we are going to see in the Holocaust. Armenians tended to be better educated and wealthier than their Turkish neighbors, who in turn turn tended to resent their success. So the part of the population that is not supposed to have as many rights, not supposed to have as much freedom and wealth, somehow they are acquiring more wealth. This happened to people who were Jewish uh, during Nazi Germany. And they were a good, a good group of people to be a scapegoat. Germany is not doing as well. We'll see the Ottoman Empire is not doing as well. They're having financial trouble. It's got to be somebody's fault. Who can we blame? If we get rid of them, well, then our future might be a little bit brighter. Adding to this resentment right after the uh, yellow here was a suspicion that the Christian Armenians would be more loyal to Christian governments. 
such as that of neighboring Russia than they were to the empire's Muslim rulers. These suspicions grew stronger as the empire, Ottoman Empire crumbled. All right, we saw this. We have talked about this in some classes. The United States was not immune to this sort of thinking. And right after Pearl Harbor during World War II, when the Japanese government, Japan, attacked Pearl Harbor, the United States government interned Japanese citizens in the United States. So we've, we've talked about this, I think, in every class. So if you were living in San Francisco and you happened to be of Japanese descent, maybe you were born in this country, but you had been living in uh, San Francisco, living near the West Coast, the United States government under Roosevelt said, don't know if we, uh, if we trust you. I know you might be more loyal to uh, Japan, even though you've never stepped foot in the country. We're going to move you to the desert in what's called internment camps. So people had to sell their businesses, sell their houses within a very short period of time if they could. If not, it was basically just stolen by the government and people of Japanese descent were moved into the desert in camps, camps. Uh, no killing was going on, but absolutely freedom was taken away for a period of time. All right, adding to this resentment, we already read that, right? All right, last paragraph, I think, for today. At the end of the 19th century, the empire was ruled by the despotic Turkish Sultan Abdul Hamid II. We've studied that. Or there too. Not a great leader if somebody is despotic, who is obsessed with loyalty, infuriated by a developing Armenian campaign to win basic civil rights. Oh, how dare they? Armenians wanted basic civil rights. Abdul Hamid declared that he would solve the Armenian question once and for all. I will soon settle those Armenians. He told a reporter in 1890, I will give them a box on the ear which will make them give up their revolutionary ambitions. So he's become very paranoid. And um, that's not a good thing, obviously, because when we read tomorrow, you'll see the first Armenian massacre is going to take place. All right. That is it for today.